Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna be showing you step by step how you can achieve beautiful and flawless shimmery finish whether we are talk about regular shimmers or multichromes or metallics. I'm gonna go through the brushes and the importance of the shape of the brush for certain application and the way how it's the easiest to apply certain product. You can also of course use them on their own but today I went first with the mats so I added an extra step which you can technically you can skip it but for that extra dimension and help you to guide everything later with the shimmers it is worth it I know it takes additional time but that is something that I would recommend today's look has been created with three different colors you can use this also by just using this technique with the one color as well but I will always suggest to use at least highlight mid-tone and deeper tone to achieve something like this which is really vibrant but at the same time you can of course use different shades but whenever I use color it can help you to see the placement like when the colors are divided you can see what am I doing and you can see the application kind of a better so yeah let's dive in into this tutorial so I can show you how you can achieve this as well as always having a good result regarding eyeshadows whether we're talking about mattes or shimmers multichromes whatever is to have a good prep base today i'm gonna be using pillow's base in shade rumor 02 different bases will give you different results based on what you're going for also certain bases in texture are more suitable for the for example dry lids than the uh, the other that are for the oily lids i'm using a high coverage base which is from pillow's i can also you know use a more product than i did i just went like for a kind of a middle spot here and when we are applying our base again no matter what type of base you're using you always 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 have to make sure you don't have any access of the base that you blend it equally and that you remove every access of the product otherwise you will have creasing for the simplest way of application regarding what technique we are using or what products we are using it is easier to go with the lightest first i will be applying shimmers and the shimmers will be final finish and the thing here is you can use both mattes and shimmers on top and depending on the shimmer product itself you will you can have different results some of the shimmers or multichromes they stick so good and their opacity is so good no matter if you have matte base underneath, matte eyeshadows. Um, but they, in general, can emphasize whatever you're doing. So I always suggest that. I know it's an extra step, but it's worth it. Right now, I'm using Tom Ford. This is Soleil Neige Collection Lumiere Diver. And I'm going to be using a different brush. I'm going to be using this shade right here. This is such a gorgeous shade. It is light enough, but the tone of it... I'm loving it. Take the excess off. When we are talking about mattes, it's really important to remove any excess. And since I've been talking a lot, I do have, you can see, I do have a little bit of creasing. Once you start applying your eyeshadows, make sure that you remove or that you just blend those creasings. That's not necessarily meaning that you have excessive product but rather that the product collects in the area where your crease is okay so with this eyeshadow i am i'm really gonna pack this eyeshadow i'm gonna go in the inner corner and i love to use a flat brush for this this one is really pigmented i'm not worried about lower lash line at the moment and the other really 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 important area right here is this area underneath my eyebrow like this is so crucial and i always do this for the most part and this is the reason why you always see me when i'm reviewing new palettes um being so excited when i see like light matte shade so whenever i'm having a light matte shade it gives me ability to whenever i'm gonna go with next shade to blend it seamlessly and to make my much more diffused blend therefore my eyeshadow will look better 
Next, I'm gonna use Mothership 11 from Pat McGrath, this matte shade right here. As these are really, really powdery, take the excess off, like even a couple of times. You can see how much you can, the product comes out from the brush and I'm going to connect this one right here. What we do have lights is here and here. So I want to connect and also be able to blend in between this light matte. And you use the lighter shade that is a little bit maybe a tone lighter than your skin tone and that is like general um, rule of thumb to when you go with the lights. I mean you can go of course lighter than that but you will always have different results. I am reapplying same eyeshadow packing that. Um, usually when I would pack eyeshadow I would use I wouldn't use blending brush. I use blending brush from blending the eyeshadows. But in this case, this specific um, tone of the and depth of the eyeshadow and the formulation gives me ability to have the result that I want. Now when it's almost, when I'm almost left with nothing on my brush, I will just go slowly towards the lighter shades they already have. And you can see this one now will diffuse together with a lighter shade giving you custom new shade, which is going to be obviously lighter variation of this one that we already have. Okay, once I have this, now it is time for a deeper shade. And I'm not at this point because I'm gonna work with the shimmers. And when you are applying mattes underneath, you don't have to be like super, super precise. You just want to give your eye base kind of um, good base for the shimmers. I'm gonna be using Lunar Night Shade from Visual Brilliance, shade Midnight Iris, but I wanna use a smaller blending brush just so you, here you can see the difference between these two. And again, whenever we are using deeper shades in general, that means that the brush has to be um, smaller and it too, oh my God, I have so much fallout and I took the axis off. What is going on? I'm basically connecting um, this shade with the previous one. I'm going to pull my lid like this so I can see everything that is going on. I didn't disrupt anything right here. We'll go with the previous brush where I had my lighter shade in here and I'm gonna go just around the edges trying to diffuse this. I'm going again with a deeper shade and now when I blend the edges because this center right here I want it to be like the deeper in the shade and then with the edges just going to repeat with the previous shade and now the tip of my brush take the excess off I am going again around the edges creating the shape that I wanted so for me it's going to be a little bit more lifted and now I can also look at this I can even go really close to the eyebrow now because I'm almost left with nothing on my brush and that is really really important you can't do this step if your brush is loaded with a pigment especially these specific eyeshadows that I'm using now depending on the eyeshadows that you are using you will have different payout payoff um these ones are super super pigmented so of course i have to be really careful um about the amount of the product that i have let me just go once again with this deep purple shade once i have my base on and again this is not perfectly blended but i just needed to lay out the color story using three eyeshadows and now i'm gonna go with the application of the shimmers i'm gonna use different textures so i'm gonna use this pink shade right here from mothership 11 and if you have pat mcgrath these special shades i mean they are stunning they are stunning and the way how this works you can just apply it with your finger in general and it's the easiest and you will have the most payout payoff um using it that way I want to use it with a finger and with a brush as well. If you want to emphasize the shimmers in general, you can use a little bit of setting spray. No, don't use it too much, but just to give it a little bit of, for them to be damp. So I like to spread my 
um, setting spray like so. And once I spray it, I just immediately do this. And now I want to lay down this shimmer in on top of the color that I already have, which is pink color. And you can see sometimes when you use your fingers, um, you can have like this, you can see how thick here it is, but we will fix that. Of course I can use smaller brush, but for the shimmers in general, you do want um, to use like flat brushes. They are the best for picking up the product or even like the really pointy, harsh brushes. But the thing is, they're not picking the product as good as your finger. But in this case, I already have so much of the product that I can just go on top of it. And in this case, the blending brush would work even really, really good, but you wouldn't have this effect if you only use your blending brush. Let me show you what I mean. So using blending brush, I'm going to swirl the shimmer and it's just lightly packing up the product. And when I use it, it's just going to diffuse it so, so much, you know, where Clearly you can see how the finger leaves total opacity of it. But one of the best results is to take the flat brush, take your spray, setting spray, and then go and use the product. That way you can see how packed it is. See, that's the difference. It's good if you're not using your finger, you pack the product with a flat brush like this. But when it comes to edges, what I want to do now, I can go with a clean brush because these are edges and I will just go slowly around like so. And it will give me like the soft diffusing effect and still having the true opacity right here. Now let's move on to a deeper shade right here. I chose to use different formula. I'm going to go in with Danessa Myricks. Lightrock 5 palette, if I can open it. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> I am gonna go in with the shade Healed, which I've got a lot of comments, also questions about this palette. It may seem like this palette is hard to work with. This is, as you can see, this is like the, this is multi-chrome and it's not the most shifting multi-chrome, but it's def the, its texture is definitely different than the previous that we used. So the way multi-chrome works in general is that you have to give them a space. The way they will reflect the best if, if you use them on a longer, bigger surface, if you're just applying multi-chrome on a small, small area, you won't be able to see all of those shiftings. Now this one, like I mentioned, it's not the most shifting one, like it shifts from this beautiful purple, wait, to something like green, something like that. Um, anyways, I am going to use this one around this area right here, but, but how are we going to use this? It is smaller area in this case. And I need some, I like having that flat brush, like I used it right here. It's not going to work here. So I need smaller flat brush just to see differences in sizes. So you can have the perspective, the shape and the size of the brushes. You guys are crucial for creating any kind of makeup, like even if you have really good brush, but you are using it the wrong way, you're going to struggle. Once again, using shade healed, it gets really, really saturated, but please make sure whenever you're using this technique for ap application of the shimmers, multi-chrome, whatever you're using, please make sure that your brush is not too, too wet. That way the product will act um, weird. It will start to crack uh, once you apply it. So make sure that you are applying the good amount, but like right now I can feel my brush being even a little bit too wet and you will feel that um, for the testing purposes, try to just apply barely of the setting product and try like to soak the brush to see the difference. I'm going once again, without damping my brush onto, onto the same product. And the goal here is to connect these two. So first I'm really packing and you can see the impact. I'm packing that multi-chrome right here. 
again, we're not gonna get like the 100% of the effect for the multi-chrome and that's not what I'm actually um, doing today. I wanted to demonstrate how you can use shimmers easily and different texture of all the sparkly products how you can use them easily, creating wearable look. Because if I applied this shade all over my lid, it will be like, it will be much more, much more visible, punchy, and maybe not something you can wear like this. And I am pretty much comfortable to use this for the day look as well. Um, I'm using that smaller blending brush. And once again, just went through that healed shade and going around the edges so i'm basically repeating the same thing that i've um, done here and here they are gonna connect from this pink to this purple if i went with this damn brush right here you saw how pigmented it was then i wouldn't have that transition so whenever you're applying shade pack the shade take the blending brush. Same technique actually works for the mattes. You have to pack the eyeshadow and then blend it, you know? So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go with the previous brush that I've used for the shimmer. And I can use this one around these edges. I did have a fallout, so I will just remove this so that I have a little bit better perspective at the moment. I will take smaller pointy brush and one thing that we miss is the light shade. If you leave it like this, it's fine. But I wanna do all shimmers application demonstration today. So from the same palette, I'm using shade protected. Um, these are really pigmented. I didn't damp my brush just because I know how, <gasps> when something like this happens, just do this to be sure. You always warm the product, warm the product. So I am going with the tip of my brush on the center right here. And it's not like that, that pigment in the beginning, but once I apply um, fixing spray all around my face, this will become even more shinier. Or if you wanna have like more impact, you can also apply setting spray here, which I will do now. Ooh, almost dropped my palette in the inner corner as well, because that's where the lights were. And this one is going to blend nicely with the previous one. Going once again, this step will, how many times you will repeat will depend on the product itself. Like I feel with a smaller brush, I have more control. Same as when I'm doing um, deep, like darker shades as well. Now for the lower lash line, we are going to keep it really simple. First, of course, repeating my base underneath. I'm using bullet brush for this case. This is a perfect amount of the wideness of, of how the shade um, underneath my eye should be wide. It already gives me that direction. So I'm applying first shade from Mothership 11, that pink shade. And it's basically, I'm going to leave this area right here. I'm going to leave it open and then this area right here. Now I'm gonna, going to connect next shade from Lunar Nightshade. And you guys, the thing here is that I'm just basically going to repeat the shades that I already have already. And it will create one seamless look. If you mess something up, you can always take a Q-tip and just rotate it while cleaning everything. And of course, for the light one, which goes into my inner corner, forgot to take the axis off. Going with a healed first, same bullet brush. Um, you can also damp a product a little bit and just going on top of the previous shade. So wherever I have matte, I'm just repeating these. And it's uh, good to have a guideline like this. You can use the same bullet brush or you can go with a smaller pointy brush like this. It's not going to pick that much of product as a bullet brush. You can see how different they are. This is more pointy brush, but if it doesn't give me opacity that I want, I will go with a bullet brush. Or in the case you want really, really strong pigment, use small flat brush. This one is wide enough. Look, this one is giving me enough coverage for what I need rather than this one, which is big and you cannot use it. This one is 
good one for the eyelid, but this one gives me perfect amount for this. So with the damp brush, see, it's giving me perfect kind of a depth right here. And um, so that is why important it is that the brushes that you're using, they can give you, they can make your eyeshadow routine so much easier. And of course, now going with, going back with the protected, in my inner corner, it's a bit uh, harder to use this one, so I'm using this pointy. Going back, going back and forth to blend with this pink one. I will go in with a pixie. This is liquid liner in black silk, but what I do like about this one, the only thing that I don't like actually is that it's not waterproof, but so easy to use. I wanted a really thin line and since like I mentioned this is not waterproof I'm gonna go in with my Inglots in 77 in my inner corner also in my waterline as well we'll apply some mascara apply some lashes these are Ardell Naked in 421 I will apply some of the liner on top of it once this dry and a little bit of the mascara on my lower lash line but only after everything has been dried. And this is the final look you guys. I really do love the effect and actually it may seem like I talked a little bit today throughout this process but in general this is not so complicated once you have before anything i'll say for this you need to have right sizes of the brushes to achieve this to make re to make it really really um fast as much as it's possible um and you're gonna have this beautiful effect that is kind of uh it goes seamlessly from the lightest to the darker one I love it. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. And if you do like content like this, make sure to subscribe and to hit the notification bell because that will be notified every time I upload new video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you more of a matte type eyeshadow person or do you like combine or extremely just, um, you just wear the shimmers? Let me know in the comment section down below. I always like to mix everything usually i do not wear all the shimmers like all the way like i've done today for the demonstration purposes i do like combination of both 100 percent but i always like to use the little part that is intense in depth and being really matte i wish you have a great day and i will see you really soon in my next video thank you guys for watching bye